Hey guys, welcome to episode 16 of the What Comes to Mind series. Today we are talking about balance. Now, when these videos are start off with some basic functions and key facts about a particular part. But today I'm fascinated with what I'm about to tell you because how our body looks after our balance is remarkable. It really, really is. And it's actually largely due to a little, little system that's in our inner ear. And it's known as the vestibular system. Now this system is actually comprised of semicircular canals, very tiny organs, to form essentially a labyrinth structure that relays information back to our brain. It works with the visual system and our skeletal muscle system, all talking and discussing with each other to help keep us balanced, um, keep us on posture, keep us upright, keep us agile whenever we need to. And it's very, very tiny in our inner ear. To give you an idea of how this works in a, in a very simple setting, when we move our head, our eyes need to adjust to go to where our head is actually moving. And it sounds very simple, but there's a whole complex of mechanisms and relays and neurons and movement in actual muscles to make sure that where our head is going, our eyes actually follow. And the term used to describe all of this is known as the vestibular ocular reflex, V-O-R. And it's one of the fastest reflexes. So we don't consciously do it, our kind of eyes do it by, by itself, known as a reflex. And it's one of the fastest reflexes in our body, around about 10 milliseconds. Pretty incredible. Now this notion of balance, spatial awareness, is often described by a very fancy term known as equilibrioception. You can hear it, see it here. Quite a mouthful actually. But then you're wondering, how does our vestibular system, so that little system, labyrinth structure in our ear, actually do the business to keep an eye, okay, if I go like this, or if I go like that, how does that actually work in terms of me keeping balanced? And it's due to a very special fluid inside the labyrinth known as the endolymph. So what's interesting is when this endolymph, this fluid moves around in that labyrinth in response to me moving around or some form of movement, it activates certain re receptors in that labyrinth that then activate neurons and signals to tell the brain, okay, this is what's actually happening in terms of balance and spatial awareness. And this is what we need to do to correct the body to make sure we don't fall over or lose balance. So now you can imagine when this endolymph, this fluid, is abnormally disturbed or infected or affected, it's going to actually affect our balance. And there's many, you can say, fundamental sources and causes where this actually occurs. And here's a few that we can go through. So one example is a sudden shock to maybe your body or your head by some form of potential trauma or some incident. And for example, a head trauma can really affect your balance, your sense of perception and spatial awareness because that fluid is really hit abnormally and really shocks that fluid inside the labyrinth which is inside our vestibular system. Another example is when that fluid or that area gets infected. So for example an inner ear infection, labyrinthitis, hence the term inside the labyrinth, actually really affects how that endolymph which is inside that vestibular system affects the way we balance, the way we move, our spatial awareness. That's actually because of an inner ear infection. Now another one which is even more relatable is when we have the common cold or a really full-blown form of influenza and unfortunately at the moment when somebody has some form of coronavirus that viral infection can actually affect the fluid inside or affect the actual system itself which affects that fluid which in turn affects our balance. So that's why when we have a full-blown viral infection we find it very difficult to orientate ourselves, our spatial awareness isn't as accurate and our balance isn't as finely tuned as it normally is when we are a healthy individual. Now unfortunately as we age there's sometimes increased dysfunction in many cases with that vestibular system which is why more often than not um, elderly aged individuals can sometimes fall more often or more easily compared to somebody a lot younger and that can be due to some form of dysfunction in the vestibular system either due to old age, potential more infections and due to loss of sight and loss of actual muscular function. Because as I mentioned earlier in the video, those two are really crucial in how we keep our balance. So if you're really weak, we struggle to keep our balance. If we sometimes lose our sight, so if I close my eyes, I may know where the road is, but sometimes it might be difficult to keep my balance. So that's why those systems are really crucial and sometimes they deteriorate 
over age. So another place where we see this kind of poor balance, poor spatial awareness, is when somebody has consumed perhaps maybe too much alcohol and is in that kind of drunken behaviour and drunken episode where they find it very difficult to keep their balance, to stand upright, the spatial awareness is potential all over the place. And that is actually because the alcohol, the fluid actually in the vestibular system, absorbs some of that excess alcohol that's in the bloodstream and increases the fluid volume, which in turn affects our balance. So that's why when somebody may have had too much alcohol in one sitting and they get to that drunken phase, that's how the balance is actually affected. Alcohol can actually affect that endodin fluid in our vestibular system. So one of the things that actually comes to mind when I think of the term balance is this notion of small and mighty. As I alluded to earlier, the vestibular system, which is a big part of how we balance ourselves and keep our spiritual awareness nice and tuned, is a very little part of our inner ear. Yet it has such a profound and integral function in our body and our ability to keep, keep a good posture, keep nice and balanced, even when we might have tripped that kind of reflex and sudden movements help us to right ourselves. And it just blows my mind that something so small has such a profound impact. And remember, just a tight labyrinth structure, a very special fluid, and it looks after how we balance. That blows my mind. Now another key term which is one of the focus of today's video is I could do a whole series on the word balance because of how many lessons I learned from that just that one word. We look at night and day as a form of balance. We look at working and sleeping as a form of balance. Fire and water as a balance. How are we supposed to live our life in terms of what we're supposed to eat? There should be a balance of certain things. You know, how we interact with, um, from family to friends, there should be a form of balance. How we do our work is a form of balance. Even the emotion we go through there is also sometimes a form of balance. There's so many lessons and so many indications of balance in the world in terms of what we do individually and how the world works. You know, there's a precise balance between certain things. And when I think of balance in the physical sense, so we're looking at how I'm balancing myself right now with, for example, my knee there, my foot there, I'm holding the camera with the tripod, my hands over here. That's a form of balance, but there are so many other huge life lessons that we can derive from the form of balance. So people, hope you enjoyed today's video, episode 16, talking about balance. Do let me know what comes to mind when you think about balance or potential stories you had about imbalance or keeping a really good balance like you saw in the thumbnail. But I look forward to hearing your comments in the section below and I should hopefully see you tomorrow for episode 17. Quite a lot of episodes so far, right? See you tomorrow.